Greetings, my name is Glenn Douglas and I serve as a group's pastor at Lake City Church. And it's so good to have you here in this video training. We're gonna be looking at a topic that we all wrestle with. It's how to deal with difficult behaviors in your group. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about what a healthy group is. All of our series are based around being better leaders and having healthy groups. Well, a healthy group starts with Jesus is here. He's with us, we invite him in to our meeting. He's the focus of all we do, and he's the one that we look to for answers and trust. So Jesus is the center of our groups. The second thing is we need to have a clear purpose and clear expectations for the group. Those need to be established ahead of time and understood. And as a leader, you need to think about what do we want to accomplish tonight? What do we want to walk away from this group with? We also want our environment to be safe and respectable so that we can agree to disagree if we need to and uh, trust God with him working on each of our hearts. It needs to be a place where you have a caring leader that loves the people in their group and the people love the leader. That happens under Christ's direction. We are called to love one another. Um, clear communication. Need to make sure that all that we say and all that we communicate is focused on the outcomes we want. There needs to be really relevant content, something that's meaningful, people can take away and apply to their lives. There has to be trust and caring, and you as a leader are gonna be the one who establishes that and sets that as an expectation in the group. And last but not least, have some laughter and have some fun. And uh, with that, that's what a healthy group looks like. Now let's, let's drill down a little deeper now on looking at how do we deal with difficult uh, behaviors in, in our group. Well, I know everyone that has ever led a group has dealt with people that come to the group and they have difficult behaviors, behaviors uh, that kind of come out and work against the training that you're trying to accomplish. It disrupts the communication within the group. And sometimes we're just perplexed on how to go forward and how to clarify. Well, I'm going to open this uh, session up here as we begin with some, some things that would help in understanding. We're dealing, first of all, with behavior. We really are. They're God's people. He brought them to your group. They belong to him. We're all on a journey. We all have difficulties. But what I'm going to be dealing with today are behaviors that all of us at certain parts and journeys of our life exhibit that aren't helpful. And um, the people in your group are created by God. They're his, like I already said. Yet we live in a broken and fallen world. And there's a lot of baggage that all of us have. Some of us are brought up in different places, different parts of the country, different parts of the world, different cultures. We may you know, even come from you know, radically different families. And so we come with a lot of different things in our journey in faith. Some of us are very new, very much at the beginning. And some have are been in the journey for quite a, quite a while. So um, uh, no matter where you are, you need to make sure that you keep that in mind as you work with folks that are challenging. A friend of mine, Rodney Wright, and most of you, many of you may know him. He was my predecessor here as a group's pastor. Rodney Wright rem would always remind us that we're all broken in various ways and in various degrees. It's the reality of our walk. It's a broken, fallen world, and we all are struggling with things. But given that, it's God's plan for us to grow together and to work through and change our character and to change our behavior. So the point we're here is to, to deal with that behavior that from time to time comes about. Um, as you lead your group, and I want you to lead it with complete integrity, extending God's grace to those that are in your group and then on their journey, we want, to we want to speak truth in love. It's extending God's grace as we deal with behaviors and, and things that are difficult sometimes. With that said, we need to, we need to define a few of the things that will help us uh, understand and in our journey here of understanding uh, how to deal with difficult behaviors. Um, here are some insights uh, as you encounter difficult behaviors that people may exhibit in your group, when something really difficult or behavior that's kind of out of the norm or disrupting happens, remain calm. Don't, don't react. Don't get excited. Don't come unglued. Remain calm and listen and watch. Don't become part of the problem. If you don't remain calm, you will be part of the problem. Um, the next thing is understand. Understand this person's intention and their journey. Try to understand where, they've, where they're coming from. 
Um, what was the culture? What was their family? What have they dealt with in their life? Perspective. You know, as you look at working with folks with difficult behaviors and you run out of ideas and you get stuck, call your coach. Look for some new angles, some new ideas. And then let them know. Let them know where you're coming from. You know, you're on a journey as well. You have strengths and you have challenges like all of us. Let them know really what you believe and where you stand and, and what you believe so they know where, you are, where you're coming from in this thing. Relationship. Build relationship between yourself and the person that you're wrestling with some behaviors to the best that you can. Extend God's grace. Uh, let them know it's a safe place as they're here. Respect. It's Christ-centered. We speak that truth in love. We move forward. Don't dwell on the past. You know, don't bring it up. Well, you know, it's just like in a relationship. Well, I remember two months ago in group when you did that. That's not going to be a starter in your group. We want to move forward. And as behaviors are improved, you move forward and encourage that person. Sometimes you have to ignore behaviors in the short term or just sidetrack that so it doesn't be the focus of the group. And then ask for help. Your coach, myself, and our team is here to also help you. Now, there are some specific different behaviors that you're going to encounter, and these have names of people tied to them. Don't assign it to anyone that you know or that I know. It's not that. They just kind of rhyme. They're kind of fun. But here are a few of the ones that you will likely have in your group. The first one is Talkative Tammy. Well, Tammy has come to your group. She is so excited. She has never been to a group like this. She is just sharing all of her background, all of her history. And Tammy doesn't seem to have an off switch. She just talks and never inhales, is always talking and dominates the group. And everybody, after a while, their eyes glaze over and they like Tammy, but it's, it's unhealthy. And so that's one of the behaviors you're going to face. And as you journey with us, as we go further and we work together, we'll talk about most effective ways to deal with each of these. But today I want to identify them for you. The other one is Silent Sally. Sally is really nice. She's friendly. She comes to the group. She sits there very obediently, seems to be very trustworthy, is listening intently, but she never says anything. Not a good sign because Sally may have some really important things to share and you need to help that to come out. So that's one behavior that if you just ignore Sally, she'll sit there till Jesus returns, never saying anything, and she has a lot to contribute. And then there's negative Ned. Here we go. We're going through the lesson. We get right into the lesson and all of a sudden negative, or negative Ned pipes up and he tells about how this has never worked before. You're using the wrong translation of the Bible. You have the wrong insight on it. And everything he says, he's the Eeyore of your group. It's just a downer to the group and it drags the energy, sucks the energy out of the group. So negative net is one that you'll have from time to time. And then, know it all, Nick. It doesn't matter what you guys are discussing or what you bring up as a leader. Nick has the answer. He's been there, done that. He has the t-shirt to, to approve it and demonstrate it. Whatever question comes in, he jumps in. He gives the answer. He's boisterous. He's loud. He doesn't allow anyone to talk. And he, again, it dominates the group. And it comes across really like nobody really likes Nick because he's just controlling. There's some ways to deal that. We're going to talk in general about those in a minute. The other one is Sniper Sandra. Sandra comes. She seems pleasant enough. But then the minute you stand up to walk away, there's some quick little pointed comment that you can hear. Or she does it to others in the group. There's just this little negative dart that's fired. And it's usually done where others can hear. And then what it does, it generates others to kind of start to get negative as well. So sometimes you'll have Sniper Sandra, and it's another one you have to deal with. And then the last one is Joker John. We all like Joker John. He's fun. He's, it makes a joke out of everything. We're yucking it up. We're laughing, but it disrupts the group. Pretty soon, everybody in the group's having a meeting with one another. There's no group anymore. It's just a bunch of individual meetings. Everybody's having a great time and laughing, and we don't accomplish anything. So those are the top ones that you'll, you'll encounter in your group over time. So what are the action steps? How do I get prepared? There's so much diversity here with the type of difficulties we could have. Well, first of all, plan well. 
pray for your evening. Think through the folks that are in your group. Uh, make sure that as you plan, maybe you put together some expectations, maybe a covenant with your group of what a healthy group looks like, how healthy participation looks. And you can address each one of these that I've talked about in your covenant, that we allow each other to talk, we listen for understanding, uh, we don't disrupt, we make sure that comments are related to the material. I mean, you can take each one of those stereotypes of behavior and put it into your covenant. And if an issue comes up and it's very disruptive, don't let it go. Don't put it off. Um, handle it early. Now, that doesn't mean to ask them to walk the plank or to leave your group. No, that's not what you do. But start to pray and clarify the expectations for the group. That may be enough for that person to say, ooh, 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 I'm kind of out of line. If it continues on, you really need to come alongside them quickly within a week or two and address it one-on-one. -on -one. And if you're not comfortable with doing that, you know, you definitely call your coach, myself, our team. We'll help coach you on how to do that. If you don't, the people in your group will vote with their feet. They will leave the group if there's a disruptive behavior that's unacceptable. Um, when you're your, your person that has difficult behavior does what's right. So if they're dominating, but this first night they come back and they're asking questions and they're listening, praise them. Be very positive with them about their, their good behavior. Attack behavior, never the person. You just always attack the behavior. Um, maintain a Christ-centered self-esteem for that person as well as yourself as a leader. Uh, realizing that we're his and we're on journey and we want to hold all of us up before Christ and that we all want to grow together. So with that, that just kind of scratches the surface. In conclusion, what I'd like to do is maintain that Christ-like attitude and always with behavior. And don't be fearful and don't be afraid of conflict. None of us like conflict, but healthy Christ-centered conflict brings about resolution and clarity and help. Build a relationship with those in your group, and even those who are really difficult or you don't like or you don't perceive they like you, work on that relationship. Take them out to coffee or find somewhere to go grab a bite to eat and, and build those relationships. Invite them over to the house for dinner or something, whatever works for you. And when stuck, definitely seek help. Like I said before, call your coach. You can call me. You can call our team there in the group's office and we are ready to help you. Wow, that is a lot. It's a difficult topic, but it's a good one and it will happen in your group. So I wanna thank you leaders for what you do and uh, thank you for the time we've had today.